Hey guys, so today I wanted to make a video on tire widths and tire pressures and why it matters to you. So basically at the end of last year, um, a couple of my friends got me to listen to a cycling tips podcast with Jan Hein and uh, Josh Pertner. I don't know quite how to say his name. I'll link that down below. I think it's, it's well worth a listen to. And from that, I basically found that I was doing a lot of stuff quite wrong, especially um, in regards to tire pressures. Um, but nowadays I'm running running a lot lower than I used to. And yeah, after my mountain biking on a road bike video, um, I got a couple of requests to to do a video on what pressures I was running. So yeah, here it is. Um, firstly, we'll go into tire widths. So the research shows that on a perfectly smooth road, a narrower tire will run run a little bit faster. But once the road starts gets starts getting bumpy. The, the wider tires will outperform the, the narrower tires. And this is mostly due to the contact point of the tire on the floor. So wider tires will have a rounder contact point and the narrower tires will have like a stretched out contact point. And this basically means that the handling will be better, the control will be better. Another benefit of wider tires is you'll have greater resistance to pinch puncture flats because the tires are running a lot higher off the rim, it takes a lot more energy to pinch puncture flat them. One important point to note with wider tires though is you're going to need a wider rim to support them. This is due to the, the overhang of the, of the tire on the rim, um, especially on narrow ones. So most stock wheels come with 15C rims and you can get away with 25s on them, um, but if you start putting 28s on them, you might start feeling the, the the cornering to get a bit sloppy and squishy uh, because of this overhang and aerodynamically it's not going to be good when you, you start moving faster as well because um, it creates this ice cream cone shape and they found that this is a pretty negative, um, negative shape for aerodynamically compared to having a wider, wider rim um, and running a wider tire on it. You you get a smoother toroidal shape and that makes airflow around it a lot better. So yeah, if you start putting wider rim, wider tires on your, your rims, just be aware that if you have narrow narrow rims, you're gonna be wanting to, to test it out a bit and see what the handling feels like because it actually might not be a positive. That being said, if you do a lot of riding at slow speeds and on rough roads, you might wanna consider upgrading to, to some wider wheels so that you can better support running wider wider tires with them um, especially if you want to maximize comfort if you're on the bike for long days you're not really riding that much above 35 k's an hour um, definitely wider wheels are t the way to go now on to two tire pressures so a lot of the research is showing nowadays conversely to what i thought would happen at higher tire pressures in the real world on any sort of road you actually start getting the negative effect to increasing the tire pressure once you get above say 110 psi which is not that high on a on a new road on, you'll actually be running slower um, with higher pressures than if you even dropped it down to about 60 psi which is pretty crazy i mean i've always thought 60 psi was like the you would never run 60 psi but 120 I used to run that in time trials. And if we call that the critical pressure, this critical pressure um, actually increases a lot quicker and a lot sooner than you might have thought. So these losses are pretty much down to suspension losses in the bike. I think many of you have felt it before when you're running very hard tires. The ride becomes very hard, but we used to think this, this was because we're going fast and that's the feeling, we're going fast. This really bumpy, hard ride, but actually that's that's just a lot of energy loss. <laughs> so this feeling of going fast is actually all that energy we're losing. At lower pressures, the bike just rolls over it smooth, so you it kind of feels a bit sluggish, but we have to just retrain our brain to, to learn what riding fast again feels like. And yeah, they found on a very rough road, so say a section of rumble strips, there was no negative effect of dropping the pressures down and down and down. The rolling resistance kept on decreasing, so there was basically no negative of dropping the pressures down until the wheel basically collapses. Another thing to note with tire pressures is the wheel compound does make 
quite a difference. If you're running a good compound, it doesn't really matter, surprisingly, what pressures you're running the, the tires at. You can drop it down pretty low, and as long as the wheel is still maintaining structure, you're not going to have any negative effects to dropping the pressure. And good tires mean sort of GP4000s or the specialized S-Works Turbo. Um, the softer compound basically absorbs more of the bumps and there's a really good website called bikewrongresistance.com and on that website you can basically plug in and compare all sorts of metrics between tyres. Um, so you can compare wrong resistance, puncture resistance, which enables you to make a good choice on the tyre for you. So how do you choose the right pressure for you? Um, what I'd recommend doing is just pumping your tyres up uh, to about 90 or 100 psi and then the next ride just drop it by 5 psi and really try and pay attention to what that feels like under you. How does it feel around corners? How does it feel over bumps? Um, how does it feel at fast speeds? And then just drop it by 5 psi again and carry on this way until you get down to to maybe 70 psi or 60 psi. And then when you're getting down to these lower pressures what you're really feeling for is if the tire's getting squishy around corners, if you feel like there's not enough air in the back wheel to over a bump, it might start bottoming out. And yeah, once you sort of start feeling these negative effects, um, you just wanna increase it by 10 PSI, and then that's probably a good pressure for you. A lot depends as well on what sort of roads you're riding. If you're riding on good roads, it's not gonna make so much of a difference if you're, say, between 70 or 90 PSI. But then once you start getting on rougher roads, you might wanna be dropping dropping some pressures out and running running on the lower end of the spectrum. And yeah, if you hit gravel, say you want to drop it another 10, 15 PSI again, because on gravel, the, the force around corners isn't going to be so high. So you're never going to get the tire rolling off the wheel. Again, you're going to get a greater benefit from, from running those low, lower PSI. Alternatively, you could go off this graph Frank Berto made. Um, and if we just pretend you're a 70 kilo rider and you have a 10 kilo bike, so your system is going to be 80 kilos, what you're going to do is divide that by half and then just draw up from, from that point. So we're at 40 kilos, we draw up to 25 mil tires, we go across and we get 73 psi. Stick that in your tires and once again just have a feel of that. Um, and get a feel for riding lower pressures. If it feels sluggish and sloppy around corners, just increase it. If you don't feel these effects, maybe drop it by five PSI um, and see how that feels. And it's really just about experimenting for yourself and, and finding what you like. But just have in mind, running low pressures will most of the time be, be faster. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave all the articles that I use to, to get this information from in the description. If you have any problems or any queries whatsoever into the research, um, just write down in the comments below and we can start a discussion there. Um, I didn't go into so much depth in the video because it's quite overwhelming um, to explain and because the main summaries are just run wider tires if you can and drop your pressures a bit. Um, so yeah, any questions down below. Thanks for watching the video. Um, just for reference, I've been down to like 45 psi descending quite fast and, and it just felt buttery smooth um, It was just insane the grip I had around corners I don't normally run that low and if I'd have hit a pothole it might have pinch flatted But it's definitely quite interesting to see that you can really run it very low before the tire starts deforming or rolling off So normally nowadays I run about 70 psi on the the front tire and 75 psi on the back tire Just because the the back tire is normally under a bit more load than the front one so thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and I look forward to seeing you soon.